we talked to this guy, Sean Boger. He was the heliport tower controller. So he's a completely different perspective at the Pentagon facing the Sitco gas station. See, this is looking at towards the Navy Annex. Here's the, the Sitco station right here. If you're in the heliport tower, the plane would be flying over here to the north side. And this is exactly what Sean Boger, the air traffic controller in the heliport tower, describes a banking plane on the north side. So this is an expert witness, and he's corroborating everyone else. We have his audio account, his exclusive interview on audio that we have in part two of the north side flyover, which is the follow-up to the Pentagon. And uh, again, when you're talking about validation on this level, it, it comes to a point where there's just no way to doubt it. And it proves that people are implicated that people lied to support this story. Regular people, or seemingly regular people. The most critical is Lloyd England, the cab driver. Anyone know who that is? Lloyd England is a major part of the propaganda. He's this guy right here. He's a DC cab driver for decades. You listen to him tell a story and you're like, my goodness, that's a very uh, emotional story and it's hard not to believe. Who's going to want to accuse this guy of being part of the operation, of being a complicit operative in this operation? Certainly not us. It's the last thing we want to do because it makes us look bad. It makes us look like we're trying to demonize these guys and, you know, to push a conspiracy theory. But, but, but we're not. We're trying to look at what happened and where this plane flew. But unfortunately, Lloyd England is implicated by the evidence I just showed you. In fact, it's at this point proven now that he had to be involved with this operation. Now, whether it's willing or coerced or manipulated, we have no idea. We don't blame Lloyd England for this event. We know that Lloyd England is not the perpetrator. Is he an asset? Is he an operative? We don't know. Is he brainwashed? Gosh, you know, we don't know. MK Ultra? Who knows? It could be any of that. We're not going to say what it is, but we talked to this guy. We got his account. His account is physically impossible, number one. Here's probably one of the more famous photos of his cab on the highway next to pole one. Here's the light pole. He claims this light pole was hit by the plane and that it speared the windshield of his cab as he was driving down the highway 40 miles per hour in the opposite direction. He claims at this pole that he can't, ended up sideways in the road just like this and that the pole was still sticking out of the windshield over the hood. He claims the top lighter end of the pole was in the back seat and the bottom heavier end of the pole was sticking out over the hood of the car and that the car came to a stop this way. He claims that he got out of the car, waved a stranger off on the side of the road who helped him immediately remove the pole from the cab and that he fell down in the process on the ground with the pole on top of him. He claims that the stranger then took off down the road and never said a word the entire time, not a single word. Now we know that there are images of the event showing his cab and the pole there within the first 10 minutes of the event. So this whole thing would have went down after he almost died by this plane in this pole, this uh, almost 70-year-old man at the time, with the Pentagon burning in the background. I mean, if any of you, I know me, first thing I'm going I'm to think about doing is taking the pole out the car. No, you're going to have the authorities do it. You're, gonna have, you're never going to take a pole out of a car under any circumstance, let alone while the Pentagon's burning after a plane just hit it and you almost died. I mean, that's the way I see it. But the real question is, I mean, let's just look at the physical evidence here, people. Here's a close-up. Look at the hood. freshly waxed. There ain't a scratch on it. The scene was staged. It's absolutely 100% proven by the evidence I just showed you. The plane on the north side is nowhere near this cab, nowhere near this pole. There is nothing seen by any of these witnesses on the south side. Not a missile, not a global hawk, not anything at all that could have possibly hit those light poles. And even if it did, obviously that light pole did not go in this cab. I mean, look at it. We had Lloyd illustrate this just to be sure. So, to, you know, to, so we know, okay, this is really what you're claiming, okay? So he drew it. 
Now here there's a scratch on the road. You can see how there's a scratch on the road where they move the pole. But the entire pole and cab scene, it looks like, okay, here, this is an official government image that they used in the Masawi trial. You can see how the pole and the top of the pole and the piece of the pole are all laid out. It, all, it looks like they just landed there, right in that space, just like that. And a lot of researchers said, said, okay, well, before we ever talk to Lloyd, they said, well, maybe this little piece of the pole went through the windshield. That could happen. It was inside the cab. So when we talked to Lloyd, that's why we got it cleared up. And he drew the pole. And he, claim, I mean, he, he claims that it was sticking out. And that's his whole story. And that's what he always said. We also got some images of the inside of his cab when we talked to him and his wife. Just so happens on the front seat of his cab, he, he uh, was reading Children of the Matrix by David Icke on 9-11. <laughs> he was reading David Icke's book. It was a brand new book at the time the one uh, um, about the lizard alien race of controlling the world. So Lloyd England had this in his cab. When you listen to his account, he talks about how after he pulled the pole out and after all that happened, he was sitting there staring at the, at the Pentagon, looking at the hole. And he couldn't believe what happened to the plane. What happened to the two engines? What happened? So this man's account, with, if true, proves that this plane hit the building as reported. But yet, he's, he's doubting the official story to us on camera. He's got a David Icke book in his car. What this does, of course, is endear him to us, <laughs> to the doubters, to the people who are questioning what happened. All of a sudden, you know, we're like, gosh, this guy's, you know, he's questioning the official story too. He's one of us. Why am I going to doubt this guy? Well, you're going to doubt him because that's not where the plane was and because his, his story is impossible. Look at the hoods. The hood is untouched. Not a single scratch on it. There you go. These are private photos that he pulled out that we took digital shots of. This is after he got the cab back the very next day of the cab. This is the front seat. It's knocked off the hinge. There's the David Icke book. So you didn't see the book in the car, but he showed you pictures of right. the book in the car. Right. We instantly recognized it and even asked him, so, Lloyd... These photos, check it out. Yeah, he, yeah, he brought out the photos. No one knew that there was a David Icke book in his car until him and his wife brought out these photos for us, the researchers. And we asked him, oh, so you read David Icke? And he said, oh, I read a lot of things. We're like, okay. Here's where Lloyd in the cab had to be. Our Lloyd in the cab was. We have plenty of images proving it. And this is the light pole location. But everyone saw the plane flying over here, as you just saw. So nowhere near that scene. When I went back and we got further validation from all the Arlington Cemetery guys, I'm thinking, all right, that's it. <laughs> you know what? I got to do something here. I went right back to Lloyd's house with this new evidence. This is two years after the fact, after initially interviewing Lloyd. And now Lloyd knows that we're, we've called him this. Knocked on the door. He knew who I was. Instead of telling me to get the hell off the property, and never come back again because you're accusing me of being a liar. He invited me in the home. I interviewed him again. I told him what I saw. He changed his story. He said now he's on the north side. Completely moved it all around. And, and just basically denied everything. Now, next thing you know, I'm challenging him. I'm basically interrogating him because of this new evidence. And, and he said, okay, well, you know what? Let's go see the cab. I said, all right, let's do that. So we went and saw the cab. We got exclusive footage and images of the cab. We see, have the back seat, all of it. This pole did not go through the back seat. The hood was untouched. I physically examined the cab. We know his story makes no sense. He stands by it, but he changed it now because he anticipated what we were going to say. He knew that we were going to say that plane was on the north side. So he said, no, I was on the north side. I proved he wasn't with images. He denied it. He denied the images. He denied the footage. He denied all of the evidence and stuck to his story that made no sense anymore. So attention needs to go on this man, Lloyd England. And we're not trying to demonize the man. As I said, maybe he's a victim. Maybe he was coerced or manipulated. We're not t telling... This isn't a witch hunt. We don't blame Lloyd for 9-11. But his account proves a deception. His account proves staging. And uh, just as well as all the north side uh, witnesses do, these honest people telling us where the plane flew without understanding the implications. Yeah.